Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to this edition of the Pest Geek Podcast. I am Frank Hernandez, your Pest Geek. Hey, we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. And a lot of you, and including me, are feeling uh, the pinch where we were getting anywhere between 10 to 12 calls a day requesting quotes to we're probably down in the last week to maybe three to four uh, in the whole week. Uh, my child is home. My wife is home. Um, my techs and I are still working. Um, luckily, with our business structure that I set out five years to do here in South Florida uh, based on the previous um, you know, nine years before that of doing uh, pest control and doing lawn and ornamental, when we launched our new company, we completely uh, decided that if we were going to get into GHP, that we were going to be an exterior only company, uh, only providing indoor services for initials and for um, uh, callbacks if there were any problems, because we do not do termites. Um, we do basically insects, ants, roaches, fleas, ticks, silverfish, you know, the occasional invader. Uh, but mostly we're an outdoor pest control company. We do lawn care. We do mosquito control. We do all of the ants that we have. Our major problems here in Florida are all outside coming in. So rarely do we actually have a problem indoor. And most of the time, if the client sees anything, uh, they're going to give us a call and complain about it. And we're going to handle it. And this has been our model uh, since we started in 2014 when we launched a new brand uh, to do uh, eco-friendly pest control, focus on IPM, focus on sealing, focus on exclusion, and focus on outdoor maintenance where all the pest problems. Why? Because for the previous, uh, since 2009, when we started the our lawn care company, uh, we were predominantly a lawn care company, 95% lawn care. We only serviced about 5% of our customers with a GHP, general household pest residential program. Why? Well, what we found is by doing the lawn and ornamental, our customers never had an indoor pest problem. So we already knew that by doing lawn and perimeter treatment, outside that we were already doing when we were treating lawns, we weren't having any problem. We couldn't sell a GHP, a, a residential service to save our life. Nobody would buy it. Uh, and nobody ever I asked the customers, Hey, why don't you add a residential service? You know, since we're already here on the property, we can give you a discount. Not even with a discount, they would buy it. Uh, reason is they were saying, Hey, since you started doing our service, we haven't had any more ant issues. We haven't had any more roach issues. Now understand, we're not talking about German roaches. We're talking about American roaches, you know, uh, woods cockroaches, roaches that live predominantly outside. There are paramet domestic pests, but that make it way inside. We didn't have the issue with the occasional invaders either, like millipedes and centipedes. All that was handled. So when I launched and we said, we're going to go to this eco-friendly model of IPM uh, with 25B products with uh, the, the, the use of, of reduced risk products uh, in, in, in the service. We branded it as an exclusive outdoor service. The only time we have to do is to get the control to inside when we do our initials. That's usually it. The average customer never, ever complains. Uh, we only get complaints in the summer. It goes to about a 3% at worst. Uh, in the winter, it drops below 1% callback rates. So, as, as a company that can continue to provide services to our clients during this uh, issue with coronavirus, um, we find that it's non-disruptive to our model because we don't have to enter their home. We don't have to engage with that customer physically, uh, enter the property. We can do it from outside. One, one of the problems that we were worried about is what happens when uh, if the government starts shutting down and saying all businesses have to close, are we going to be classified as an essential business. And what we found is, yes, the, the, the federal government has declared us now an essential business uh, because of health, because of food. Uh, we control a, a lot of problems in, in, the, in the food and health sector uh, where, you know, products don't get contaminated between manufacturing and distribution all the way down to the retail level uh, because of rodent problems, roach problems, grain pest problems, food problems, uh, pests. So, you know, this is something that we're dealing with right now 
uh, as a company, as a nation, as an industry. I want to, I was meditating on, on Sunday. I was sitting there having breakfast and I, I was thinking about, you know, this verse came to me, you know, came to my heart. Obviously, the word of God is in my heart. I study it. Uh, I, I live it and, 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 and I believe it and I live by it. But it, it, Matthew, the, the verse in Matthew uh, 7, 7, I was sitting there having breakfast with my son, just looking at him uh, and, and thinking this verse came to mind and it says, you know, you that being evil and, and, and understand, don't take this so far because people go so crazy with stuff. But in general, humanity as a whole is not good as a whole. I mean, that's just as a believer, I understand that. Uh, as a Christian, I understand that. And I'm reading this and it says, but if, if you learn, if your son would ask you for an egg, would you ever give him a rock? You know, and at that moment, I, I actually prayed and I thank God that we actually have food. Um, that we have, my son can, can go to me and say, I'm hungry and I can provide for him. Because this is a serious problem right now for a lot of people, and, and I want you to have some hope. I want you to be comforted. I, I want you to understand that, you know, as a community, that we should be there for each other, that they're, 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 that I am praying for you guys, that there's a whole bunch of us out there praying for everybody. Um, because I was sitting there and I said, my son doesn't have to worry right now about eating. At least not for a couple of weeks. I mean, we went to the supermarket on Sunday. Uh, we went to Publix. The, the meat shelves were bare. There was no meat left. My, my, my wife was like, hey, let's just go and grab some meat. And we were at our in-laws. Maybe we can do a little barbecue and, you know, hang out together. There was nothing. Um, you know, we had food to eat, but there was nothing to make something special like that. And I'm thinking, you know, what are people going to go through in the next couple of weeks when they're out of work? Um they're going to have to not get paid because a lot of companies aren't paying them uh, if they're not at work. Uh, there is no medical leave act there. They can get, you know, some people that have racked up uh, their, their vacation may be able to take their vacation time. A lot of people that have, um, you know, have sick days that they, but a lot of people who work for small uh, employers like mine um, won't get paid if they get sent home. Uh, if you're, you're in a small little restaurant, um, you're not going to get paid. And, and, you know, I, I was that that was heavy on me looking at my son and saying, thank God that my kid right now doesn't have to go hungry. Um, some people will. Some people's kids will suffer through this. Um, they just don't have the money. Um, there's parts of this country uh, that does suffer uh, a lot of poverty, even in this age. Um, and, and I just said in the, 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 and I looked up this verse again and it says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, uh, and it will be open unto you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who, who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Or what man is there among you who, 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 if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law of the prophets. Understand, there's a lot in here. It's talking about a lot of spiritual realities. But the fact is that this is not the time for you to sit there and be worried because you can't solve anything by being worried. I want you to know that there is no solution ever going to come from being worried. You can't change the reality by worrying. You can pray for wisdom. And I, and I, and I put out a, a, a message out over the weekend about how this time is for you to think, meditate. The business you've been wanting to start might actually be given to you at this time because you have an opportunity to sit there, think, and say, I've got two weeks. I've got three weeks. i got a month. I understand that it's not going to be easy. I'm not telling you, hey, this is going to be easy. This is going to be tough on a lot of people. I've been out of work before. One time in my life, I was out for 30 days. 
Um, and, and after 30 days, I started wondering, am I, how am I going to find work? Um, I, I remember going at one time from making 50000 a year to making $7 an hour loading trucks uh, for FedEx. And then, you know, I had some time to think. I had some time to use. Luckily, I was still able to eat, feed, you know, do whatever I needed to do for the time being for a season while that was over the holidays. And, you know, we made it. For some reason, I've always made it. I've never starved. I've never not. When I started this business, when I was doing one job for $45 a day, I still made it. Um, it's just my, I don't know if it's my strong faith, if it's just my resilience, is it my tenacity, is it my perseverance? But there's a lot of truths in here about knocking and asking. This is the time for you to probably, as a business, to up your marketing to start making new offerings. I know that there are a lot of people out there are thinking about going into the, um, you know, start applying, you know, DSV for decontamination and selling that as a service. I don't think that's the wisest move. You need to really consult your, your insurance company on that. A lot of your insurance company are gonna tell you, no, you're not covered. If you treat a building, you treat a property, and you said, hey, we treated it for a coronavirus, uh, and somebody gets coronavirus, the, the lawsuits are going to start flowing. Like you got to understand that that's just the litig litigative society that we live in, that somebody, and especially when somebody is out of work, is going to be hurting, they're going to be in, in deep mode uh, about everything, and they're going to need and say, hey, we're just going to sue this company because we need to make it. Um, but understand that it's time for you to market. You know, we're, we're going to start dropping our prices on our services uh, because we basically are going to be people who are going to need it who who can't afford our full price and we're going to basically take our gross profit out of it and just make sure that our people we have enough business that we can continue to operate keep our people working um but the 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 you know we got our overhead covered we're going to be able to sustain ourselves through the bare minimum just being very conservative not making trips not waking extra gas not buying products we don't need you know we're tightening up our belt in that area but we can still make it with the staff that we have we can still do what we need to do and you know we're going to be okay i think um but we're going to have to drop our prices to help people hey who do have a roach problem are going to say hey listen i need, i i'm not working right now and I have this massive roach problem. And a lot of people are going to ask for discounts. And on some of the things that we know is a health issue like German roaches, that is not a luxury uh, item. And nobody's going to come to me and say, listen, I need a price break on the lawn care uh, because I want my lawn to look nice. Listen, you can go with an ugly lawn. That's just a reality. Um, but when people really need stuff like German roach control because they're going to get sick because of that, can we provide a service for them? Can we take the precautions? Can we continue to keep our people working? Could we do the business that nobody's willing to give them a break? This is the time for you to knock, ask, and, and, and knocking, and you take this. Some people are going to say, well, you're taking this out of context. Um, not really. Uh, one thing I understand is how to do an exegesis of text. There are many, many principles here. This is the time for you to up your marketing, start asking people, what can you help them with? People are needing help. Um, and what can you help with to be able to, to you sustain your people? Can they tell through their network of friends, hey, this company is offering a $50 off or $100 off the roach service if you need it, give them a call. This is the time for you to step it up and not worry, but be creative, be responsive uh, to things. And, you know, ask Asking you shall receive. That who asks most are going to get. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Those that are going to sit there worrying and then die just out of hunger because they haven't tried something new. This is the time for you to evaluate your business and to look at what can you change in your business. This is going to be a defining moment for your company to where your business model is going to have to change to address some of these issues and you and, and instead of being a reactive now you're being proactive to where you have a new business model that now not only is more efficient look the 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 the, the things that I learned to do in being efficiency and applying six sigma to my business 
and applying, um, you know, lean to my business and applying a lot of the things that I did was in a time of deep crisis. I want to tell you a little story. When I started my company in 2009, which was the most terrible time to ever start a company in history is when you are in a downturn in the economy and the next year defined my business. This is when I first started in 2009 and I made some serious decisions to get out of big vehicles and 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 dump the the, the tank. And I was doing an F-150, you know, doing $1,000 a month in fuel. And I downgraded to a Tacoma. And people are like, you can't do lawn and ornamental with a Tacoma. It can't be done. And I downgraded to a Tacoma. And I was able, I ditched my spray rig. That's the year that I ditched my spray rig. We attached these little, you know, 10, 15 gallon, 25 gallon. And we reduced water because I already had been doing testing for three years. I was doing actual conferences on this and people were telling me I was crazy that it couldn't be done. And we went to reduce water by 90%, downgraded the vehicle. I went from a thousand dollars a month to $200 a month in fuel in the middle of a crisis when everybody was telling me it couldn't be done. This is where you find out where you create, where you stop listening to everybody telling you how they're going to die and how things are not going to happen for them and how you can't change and how you can't do things. And I tell you, we went to a 24 gallon tank where we carried water and mixed everything on site. And you know what? I thrived. I had a new working model. We went from doing external indoor services to doing exclusively outdoor services. When I was doing, I mean, in 2017, I stopped that, uh, doing uh, spray service inside to only crack and crevice. Then in 2009, we were no longer doing, we were doing about 5%, but we decided we're no longer going to do indoor services as a general service, only when people call with a problem. This is when I started doing it in 2009. This is not something. So when I started this new company and we wanted to do GHP, because GHP was going to be part of our business now as a model, well, we've grown it. Now we're 50-50. Uh, this year, the like year before last, we were 60, 40. We're still doing it. So you're going to, this is the time for you to evaluate. This is the time for you to meditate. This is the time for you to look at what it is that you're doing and how it is that you can do it different, better, more efficient. Look at, look at Winslow Taylor. Look at Six Sigma. Look at Lean. Look at what a lot of companies are doing and says, I don't never want to do that. It, you know, it might have to be your, that might be your saving grace at this time. The business you've been wanting to start, you know, what's going to happen when you're not laid off for a couple of weeks or maybe the company has to lay you off permanently because they can no longer keep you because they've lost so much business. I already have guys calling me saying, I've got people canceling. 900 a month accounts, you know, went down to 400. I've had one cancel so far because it's commercial. We're not in commercial. I got out of commercial for that reason. Commercial was too difficult for us to maintain in this market. So, you know, you, looking at maybe starting up that business that you've thought about, this actually might be the best time. I'm telling you because in 2009, I'm going to tell you another part of me that you don't know. In 2009, when I started my company, Six months, my daughter was also being born. These are three things that happened. I had bought my new house. My daughter was being born and I was starting up my new company. Talk about things you don't want to do at the same time. But I am that tenacious. I am that just going after things that I know I can do things. And the sad part about the situation was that Within six months of doing this, a lot of the clients that were doing very well decided to cancel. The landscapers started doing illegal pest control and they were going in and saying, we're going to do it for half and customers dropped us. I lost $10,000 of new business that year starting out, which was terrible. And then on top of that, I, I get hit with a divorce um, and I end up losing the house, the condo, and I kept the business. Um going back to to starting dealing in total adversity and being able to thrive in that adversity being that determined um 
having to deal with all this at the same time, the emotional problems and dealing with the business problems and dealing with how do you make it through all this? What it wasn't, if it isn't for stuff like this, like my faith, I would have never made it. So I, I, this is what I want you to know. This is what I want you to focus on. This is what I want you to be able to have a perspective. There are a lot of people who I talk to who are talking about putting a gun to their head. They're owed ten, fifteen thousand dollars by companies who haven't paid them, and now they're going into a crisis and they can't buy food. I want you to keep your perspective and don't lose hope. If there's a message that I can have for you today, is don't give up, don't give in, you move forward. Soldiers, you know, are like us, we don't retreat, we don't surrender. You know, if we have to, you know, we go forward. Um, there are things that you need to do right now that you can to take action. Uh, NPMA um, has a uh, take action now. It, it, it's a, I got a link on this podcast, but you can go to NPMA, uh, look up take action on their website. And, and they have a letter that they have written. Uh, actually, it is a petition for every state there's one for your state for every state and i'm going to read to you the petition uh, so that you can take action on what you can do right now as you know over the past several days as more information on the coronavirus covid-19 is being disseminated by the federal state and local governments there has been a push to classify industries as essential or non-essential those deemed as essential can continue to operate as more quarantines and restrictions are put in place. Um, WVPMA and NPMA firmly believe that structural pest control is an essential industry that must continue to provide the valuable services we offer during this pandemic. Take your state, uh, tell your state lawmakers that pest control is an essential service. You need to do this right now. Okay, you can't wait. You need to go on to npmapestworld.org slash public dash policy slash take at take dash action slash take dash action. I have a link. If you want to go to um, the blog is going to be up by the time you see this. It'll be in this video. It will be in in our in our in our page. You can go to NPMA right now. Just, you know, go into their platform, take action, get this filled out and get it done right now. Do not wait on this. You know, I, I've been critical of NPMA in the past. Uh, this is one of those things that you have to take action on, that you have to take advantage of and do because if your state gets classified, like you're not essential, you're going to be sent home. But if you can continue to work somehow, you can continue to, even part-time, even with reduced hours, you can provide for your family. This is what I'm going after. Forget about the, the business, the industry, what the industry is going to do, what legislation is going to do. What can you do right now? Okay, because it, it is in, in the memorandum on identification of essential critical infrastructure workers doing COVID-19 response from... Christopher C. Krebs, Director of Cybersecurity and Informative Security Agency, known as CISA, C-I-S-A. Workers supporting healthcare, food, uh, health, uh, public health, food and agriculture are classified as essential critical workers to the workforce. Okay. This means now that under this document, I have a link to this document too. You can look at it. Pest control and pest control manufacturers, pesticide manufacturers are on that list, okay, as of right now. Um, so I, I'm putting out this podcast, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a daily podcast uh, on this until we decide that this is over, that we can back off, uh, that we can take a little break. But uh, it, it's going to be about four to six hours a day for me to invest in this podcast uh, to keep you guys informed of what's happening uh, to keep you encouraged to be with you on this uh, together during this time. Um, I, I think it's vital. I think that I, uh, my best investment I think I could make, having vision, looking forward, uh, is invest in the industry, invest in you, invest in this podcast more. Um, 
we're going to be working on that academy a lot. I've been, I've got six out of the 11 classes recorded. Um, I was only able to do maybe one a week uh, because we have to do PowerPoint presentations for it. We have to create and edit those down. We have to create the videos, create the lessons, upload those. It, it is an enormous amount of time per lesson, probably to 12 to 16 hours uh, per lesson that we have to invest in that. And most of it is done by me. Uh, so uh, the WPCA, uh, I'm sorry, WBCA, which is the British Pest Control Association, is also um, fighting for this uh, under key workers. They use a, they use a term called key workers uh, amid the, the, the COVID-19 epidemic. There's a link on there also um, for you guys. And um, Alan uh, Fugler, which I actually met in person, really cool guy. Um, he worked in insurance. He was, I believe, I, I'm not sure if he was in, in the president of uh, Florida Pest Management Association in the past. I know I've met with him in a couple of classes, talked to him. Um, he wrote a, an article. Um, he is the, the director of risk management for Exterminator Pro. Now, it's X-T-E-R-M-I-N-A. TOR Pro, which is the division of Houston International Insurance Group, HIIG. And he created a checklist of, of dotting your I's and crossing your T's on employee paperwork. This is a critical time for you to do this, making sure that your people understand the risks that they're involved in right now. Um, but accident report forms have to be in place. Employee injury forms for state OSHA uh, 300A have to be in place. OSHA state employment posters. Make sure they're up. Vehicle maintenance logs. Vehicle use and cell phone policies uh, need to be in place. Employment applications need to be in place. Licensing and, tra <coughs> and training records need to be in place. And uh, motor vehicle release forms. The article has been found on pctonline.com articles slash dotting I's crossing T's. It's, it's top of mind right now, so you can get it um, on there. But guys, if, 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 if your phone is not ringing, okay, like I said, this is the time for you to take action. And one of the ways that you can take action is if you've been on the mend about on the you know fence about getting maybe an 800 toll free number or maybe getting a vanity number you're like 1888 got bugs or an easy to remember number like 1800 600 500 to increase the ease of your customers getting a hold of you contacting you um this is the time you might want to do this now uh ring boost which is one of the nation's largest provider of these services came to us and said, hey, would you be interested in promoting this on your podcast? And of course, I said yes. Um, we did a, a podcast with them uh, interviewing um, uh, to wheel. And what what I what he said is, hey, look, we're going to do a 15 percent and if we're going to give you a custom page. So we've got our own page, which is uh, I'll tell you right now. Uh, let's see here. Where is our page? Ah, here we goes. So it's pest geek. I'm sorry. It's, I got to get my glasses off. I can't read and talk. Uh, ringboost.com slash pest. If you put in pest 15 at checkout, you look for your number, get the number you, because you can do this right on their website. There you go. See right here, uh, Pest Geek Podcast discount. If you use our link and the promo code, which is pest 15 right here, pest 15, Hey guys, you get 15% off. You can do the search right there. Buy it right there online. Easy peasy, you know, phone squeezy. So go ahead and do that. Take advantage. Also, I wanted to remind you guys that we are on Patreon. Look, we've got one person that has committed to donating five bucks a month uh, to us uh, for our podcast, which is an incredible value considering I give you so much information for free. Um, you know, I know at times are hard right now. It's probably the wrong time to ask, but Hey, if you're doing okay, 
and you can spare a couple of bucks a month and you want to support this podcast to keep it uh, independent, that we can pretty much talk about anything we want to without risk of me having to say, hey, you know, take off. You don't want you don't want me to talk about your product. Um, we won't take your money. And they're, they're telling us, go fly a kite, Frank, because you know, we're, we're not going to let you talk bad about our product or criticize or do a demo on our product. You know, I'm going to do demos and I'm going to be honest and transparent to give you a real demo on a product, give you all the warts. Uh, hey, go ahead and support us at pestgeekpodcast.com. Uh, you can hit donate or go straight to Patreon slash Podcast. Hey, if this podcast has been helpful to you, do me a favor. Hey, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, share it with your friends. But also go ahead and tune in, participate in everything that we're, we're talking about here. Take action today. Do not allow this to paralyze you guys. Hey, until next time, this is Frank the Pest Geek wishing you a pestacular day.